Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, today we're talking about the MX150, a laptop GPU that can be found in a wide variety of netbooks, whether they are high-end, mid-range or entry level. Now, the MX150 has been around for a couple of years now and is set to be replaced with the MX250, although this process is taking longer than anticipated and as such, Notebooks featuring the MX150 can be found at a much better price than they could have been found at a couple of years back. And this makes them more tempting if any of you out there are looking for a reasonably priced laptop. I say reasonably priced, but you're still going to be spending over the odds for a laptop that won't perform as well as a desktop PC. Though, of course, if you are in the laptop market, then building a desktop PC probably is not your main priority and nor is a comparison between the two. While we are on the subject though, the MX150 is the mobile equivalent of a desktop GT1030, so you should still expect reasonably acceptable performance across a lot of titles. Now, Nvidia being Nvidia have released a couple of variants of the MX150 and it doesn't really stop there. Now on the surface you can get a 2 gig variant and you can get a 4 gig variant, both with GDDR5 VRAM. This is perfectly fine. However, diving a little deeper into the detail here, and you'll find that there are also other versions of the MX150 floating around. For example, if you go into Tech Power Up's GPU Z tool, you'll see that the one I'm using has the codename 1D10. This is the slightly higher power version and the one that you want to look out for. Now there is a slower version that uses a little less power, codenamed 1D12. And when it comes to things like gaming, well, this one would be significantly worse. Or so I've heard. It can of course be hard to gauge which one you are getting, unless you know the ins and outs of the specs or have a chance to fire up GPU Z before you buy, which a lot of the time you won't get to do. What looks like a sneaky business practice is I believe done so that thinner and smaller laptops can use even less power. Just bear that in mind because you won't be getting as much performance from the 1D12 version as you would do from the 1D10 version. It's just important to double check reviews and really consider what you are buying before you actually buy it. Thankfully, this Medion laptop I've got here features the 1D10 version with two gigs of GDDR5 VRAM, and it's the one that's most common, at least here in the UK. Four out of the five random laptops I clicked on when shopping around featured the two gig MX150, and diving a little deeper revealed that they were in fact the 1D10 versions of the mobile GPU as well. As with all mobile GPUs, they are only ever as good as the processor they are paired with. Now if this was paired with an i3, then it would do significantly worse than it would do if it was paired with an i7. And with a laptop you have a lot less control over the components that are inside your machine, and to get the top spec you have to spend quite a lot of money. Now this one features an i5-8265U, it has 4 cores, 8 threads, and it seems to be a common pairing with the MX150 at the sort of mid-range price point. In terms of desktop equivalents here, you're talking probably about an i5-3550. But enough of that because now it's time to see what this can actually do when pushed with some modern AAA titles. So a chip like this is better suited to lighter games, things like esports titles such as CSGO here, which performs very well even with the high settings at 1080p. We were seeing around 75 frames per second, although things did get a little choppy here and there, though turning things down a bit graphics wise to say medium or low would probably resolve this. What I did here was allow the GeForce experience to detect the so called best settings for each individual game, and it decided that high was best for CSGO here, with any forms of MSAA turned off. When it comes to online multiplayer titles, I always try and hit closer to 60 frames per second, or I should say that I'm happier with 60 frames per second because I think that's more important in a competitive environment than it is in a single player title. 
Apex Legends will come close at 1366 by 768 averaging 54 frames per second. Now I found that the frame rate differs entirely depending where you are on the map. I know this could be said for a lot of games but it seems more significant in Apex Legends here. Overall it was a pretty decent experience and I'd happily play the game with this graphics chip. Now in Battlefield 5 I was hoping for a 30 FPS average which was actually doable at 900p with the low settings. Once again this is the settings that the Nvidia control panel chose. Again it can be a little choppy here and there. You can see that the i5 really suffers here. This is a CPU intensive game and as such it will struggle quite a bit. These aren't the sort of games that this thing was designed to play, though it's nice to know that should you want to fire up a modern AAA title, you can do so, albeit with lower graphical options. Now Dirt Rally 2 at 1080p with the medium settings achieved 38 FPS on average. We also saw pretty decent 1% and 0.1% lows here. Dirt Rally 2 is a very easy to run game when it comes to a lot of hardware as are most other titles in the Dirt series, which is good. If you have a relatively low-end machine, you want to test it out, then the Dirt series is always a good place to start. Here with 38 FPS, it felt okay, and there weren't any significant frame drops in either the time trial or the full race options. Next up it's Gears 5 and again I was worried that we'd see a PowerPoint presentation going on here but at 720p with the low settings and the variable resolution that's when the game drops things accordingly depending on the performance on screen we saw 51 frames per second on average this isn't too bad I've actually shown you the choppier of the two runs here the first run I did of the benchmark test was faultlessly smooth but the second time round it got a little bit jumpy. I thought I'd show you the worst case scenario here, just in the interest of fairness. But first time round, there was no stutter whatsoever, and that's where I've taken the benchmark figures from. Next up, it's one of my favourites, Kingdom Come Deliverance. I was sneaking around the opening village here, trying to steal some nails. Um, that's generally what you do in this game, go around stealing things or fighting people and I absolutely love it. Here at 900p we were averaging just above 30 frames per second though we did have to turn the graphical options all the way down as well as disable any form of anti-aliasing. Kingdom Come Deliverance used to be very very demanding but now I've found it's more lenient to lower end hardware and the MX150 is no exception. There will be a few cases where the frame rate does drop below 30 quite significantly but it doesn't take long for things to ramp up again and you should be back to that average in no time. Now this black screen is where the player unknown's battlegrounds footage should be. First time round when I ran the benchmark test everything ran fine but I closed the game, opened up MSI Afterburner and nothing. I then closed MSI Afterburner and every time I tried to run the game after that Nothing would happen, so I guess I only got one turn with this game. I don't think this is an issue with the MX150 at all. I think it's just an issue with the game not wanting to start again for whatever reason. But I've thrown the figures up on screen here so you can see how well PUBG did at the very low settings. I don't think it was too bad all in all. Finally, even Rage 2 managed a fairly solid 30 FPS, albeit at the lowest settings available. I manually changed everything down to low here because when I left it up to the Nvidia control panel, it left a few things on medium and that made us see about 23 or 24 on average, especially when the action started to heat up. So the lowest of the low settings is best for Rage 2 here. Overall the MX150 is still certainly suited better to lightweight titles such as CSGO though you shouldn't be afraid to test out some more intensive games as I've done here. It's also worth considering though what Ryzen APU laptops are on the market because you may see better results especially with the newer Ryzen processors that are featured in some portable solutions but just do a little bit of research make a few comparisons where you can and shop carefully I think that's even more important when it comes to laptops and their respective CPU and GPUs. I've never tested the MX150 before but I think it did okay considering it is an entry level chip and it can be found in some lower cost laptops. With all that said and done then leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't let me know if you have a MX150 and a 
laptop that you own and how well it performs for you and in which games. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.